What's your biggest concern about Carolina right now? My biggest concern about Carolina is that I looked at the koozie watch list and Caleb Love is on it. And Caleb Love, as we learned last year, is the shooting guard. I was going to say, see the point. Caleb Love is the shooting guard. Is R.J. Davis on it too? Emphasis no? on shooting. R.J. It, Davis is not on the list. So I think once again, the, the media has to be reminded that R.J. Davis is the point guard. Caleb Love is the shooting guard. And I worry, I have a tinge of concern about Baycott just because he's got to do a lot this year. You know what I mean? And and he's had a great offseason. There's no tell. I don't know. I, I just want to, I hope his if, ankle's okay. If Carolina sucks, what would happen? Like, yeah, like what's the, what's if the. Carolina sucks, what would happen? Or like, uh, no, no, not like what would happen. Like what did happen that led to that point? Like if I told you Carolina is going I, to. I, I think. Not uh, be that. Now they're going to be ranked 17th. At, when the, at the start of January. I think it would be similar to the 2018 season after they won in 2017, even though they didn't win this time. I think yeah. it would just be a little bit of, uh, I'm, I'm a star, you know? Yeah, a little bit of one basketball. It changes the- it changes things when you're, like, actually big man on campus yeah. and everyone's big man on campus. Yeah. Everybody's, know? yeah. And that, in, the cover in North Carolina, I mean, for people that don't or aren't around Chapel Hill, like, when you're a basketball player at the University of North Carolina, you can do pretty much whatever you like. Yes, and if we, know, you, we all read the, the Weinstein <laughs> yeah. report. <laughs> but if you're beating Duke and Coach K in their last game yeah. twice, I can I only know. imagine what the the disease of more. I don't. I can't imagine. Yeah, and so. like Brady Manick has, he didn't have to come back, so he got to like really enjoy. I, I, it. I bet like all those guys were jealous of Brady too. Then that he just they, got to ride out in the yeah, sunset. Yeah. yeah, they had to go back to practice. Yeah, they're like, oh wow, what is Brady doing? Is he playing? Somewhere? He's in Perth. Yeah, playing for the Wildcats. Oh, balling. Some people that feels have, right for him. Well, some people have said, "How did the Denver Nuggets sign Jack White, who is a bum, and then Brady Manick is playing in Jack White's home country and uh, is no. balling out?" No, I don't I'm going to say this: it. you don't want Brady Manick in the NBA. That's that's bad for the brand. You, yeah, because you don't want Brady Manick just like getting tossed around as a as a you know as, getting as Tyler Hands bro. Yeah, you yeah. don't you don't want that. I don't. You don't, you don't want him yeah. getting sent down to the G League and no one can. You, you what you want from Brady Manick is he's Australia feels right. Australian superstar. Australian superstar. That, that's what I, I I'm checking on the highlights. They're like Brady Manick tonight, 21 points. You want Brady Manick to like kind of develop an accent because he's been mm-hmm. down there for so long. I want people to and think he's an, on the Australian national. Maybe he is yeah, on the Australian yeah. national team. Maybe he becomes Australian. He's, he's like Stefan Marbury in China. <laughs> I will say, yeah, definitely. He becomes like a national icon. I mean, Dennis Rodman in North Korea. Oklahoma, I don't, I don't Australia seems like a, a match made in heaven, too. Like, if you grew up in Oklahoma, it seems like you could do well, yeah. you know, down in Aussie land. Yeah, it does. Oklahoma is, is it's Oklahoma a handshake. The, it's a handshake deal. Yeah, Oklahoma and Australia cultures feel similar. Yeah. That, that you just like, yeah, you, you, you're walking out and. In, exactly in, in, in the middle of nowhere yeah, yeah, you're walking out there's the middle some, of nowhere. some crazy <laughs> that can kill you comes up on you and you yeah. just shoot it yeah you just laugh you at just, it just laugh at it just and move on <laughs> all right this is terrible uh let's take a break we'll come back and uh are, are you are you satisfied with the secret scrimmage i think so i think we covered everything i think so so i, I guess let's not take a break yet uh uh trending up tra- who, who's who's the big winner who's the big loser from all this would you say i think illinois is the biggest winner i would of agree se- with that. Of secret scrimmage season. i would agree with that yeah um the biggest loser duke for me <laughs> duke we didn't hear, we didn't hear, a single <laughs> yeah, I didn't word. hear anything about duke no scrimmage. i think the biggest winner is alabama um having the players on the media <laughs> and i think the biggest loser is wake forest for blowing their wad in the scrimmage oh, you think they, yeah, yeah they peaked too early you peaked too early <laughs> yeah, you, you idiots you can't peak in you october moron. hey there thanks for watching titus and tate for the full friend of the program experience subscribe right below and come join us for all things college basketball the action is heating up come join titus and tate